Well, due to the direction of the current, two sides of the loop will feel an I cross B force. This side will feel an upward force, and this side will feel a downward force. And this will cause the loop to feel a torque, causing it to rotate counterclockwise. Now, after the loop has rotated some amount, the total I cross B force is still pointing upwards here, straight upwards, and straight downwards on this side. But only the component of F that is in the direction of rotation, which here we're calling F tan, so only this portion of it uh, will contribute to the torque and to the rotation of the loop. We can define the torque, tau, in units of newton per meter, newton meters, uh, or nm, the amplitude here of the torque will be f tan, the tangential component, to the rotation, times d, where d is the width of the loop. Next, if we define beta right here to be the angle by which the loop has already rotated, and by geometry, we can also find that this is also equal to beta. Then we can expand F tangential here in our equation for the torque as being, let's see, I L B applied and cosine beta. Now, with magnetic fields, we're going to see a lot of cross products. Cross products are going to be in probably every equation dealing with magnetic fields. So if we can change our cosine beta that we have here to a sine of some angle, then we'll be able to identify this equation as being a cross product of two vectors, since cross products involve sine of an angle. So identifying cosine beta here is equal to sine of theta, here's theta, which is 90 minus beta. Now we can write, I'll do it over here, tau, uh, that's a magnitude, tau, is equal to I L D times B applied maybe this wasn't a good place to put it, times sine of theta. Then if we identify L times D, well that's just the area of the loop, then we have I A B applied sine theta. Now B applied has a direction associated with it, so that makes sense to have that uh, turn into a cross product of two vectors. But what about this I times A? Does this have uh, a direction associated with it? I times A can be associated with the magnetic moment of the loop, which is this vector right here. We'll call that M vector. So M here is I times A, and it's, a, it's in the N hat direction, where n hat is a vector that's normal by the right hand rule. Our fingers curl around in the direction of the current in the loop, and n hat, our thumbs, point, um, or our thumb points in the direction of n hat. So finally, plugging the magnetic moment into our equation for the torque, we get tau is equal, that's a vector, is equal to m crossed with B applied. Now once the loop has rotated to a vertical orientation as shown here, then I crossed with B applied has no tangential component and the loop no longer feels a torque. So tau here is, it's a vector, is equal to zero. So that is once M, this magnetic moment, is aligned with B applied, since in the same direction, the loop is in a stable position. And in other words, the loop wanted to rotate until its own magnetic moment, M, was aligned with the applied B field. Now here's a question. We know the Earth's magnetic field exists in space where our satellite will be. 
If we have a wire loop with current flowing in it on or near our satellite, we know that the wire loop will feel a torque and it will want to rotate and align itself to be perpendicular to the Earth's magnetic field. So now the question is, can we use this to our advantage to address the problem of wanting to keep other satellites away from our satellite? Well, one possibility might be that we can use current carrying loops in the Earth's magnetic field to steer an object towards a hostile, hostile satellite. And the steering could be done by what are called magnetotorquers. A magnetotorquer has two or three, here's a diagram with three separate current carrying coils. With three coils, we would want one aligned along an x-axis of a Cartesian coordinate system that we could define, a second coil oriented along the y-axis, and a third coil oriented along the z-axis. The magnetic moment, and here, here are the three coils. This is a diagram, so it's not the, uh, these are not perpendicular. Well, I, I guess they can look perpendicular if you look at them in a 3D shape. Uh, so the, the, but they're supposed to be perpendicular in a Cartesian coordinate system. The magnetic moment of each coil can then be controlled by how much current is sent through the coil. And in other words, by controlling how much current is flowing in each of the three coils, we can rotate the magne magnetotorquer in any direction we want, and therefore also help steer an object, whatever object might be connected to this magnetotorquer, in the direction of the enemy hostile satellite. So, what kind of object would we want to send to a hostile satellite if we don't want to blow it up? Well, what about a ma metallic blanket that we could use to cover up the hostile satellite? Here is a diagram showing how it might already be wrapped around a satellite. We've seen from the previous design challenge on EMPs that a fairly thin sheet of metal or blanket of metal could prevent the satellite, the enemy satellite, and specifically any antennas and cameras on the satellite from being able to send and receive communications or data and so forth, so that perhaps no one could give it any instructions on what to do, and no one could receive any information from it, basically making it inoperable and unusable. This is uh, one idea anyway. Take out your in-class project notebooks and make a note about how we might be able to use magnetotorquers to steer something, perhaps a metallic blanket, towards a hostile satellite. And describe how a potential three-axis magnetotorquer could control the shape of the metallic blanket and how that would work in the Earth's magnetic field.